Dow shares, uh, you can see it off the lows this morning. That follows first quarter results. The uh, giant chemical company did beat estimates, did see declines, though, across its operating segments, citing slower global macroeconomic activity. Joining us now on CNBC Exclusive is Dow's chairman and CEO, Jim Fitterling. Jim, good to see you. It's been a little while. Let's just start off with your characterization of sort of the global economy, because it's an important one for people to hear. Um, you know, are things picking up, in your opinion? Good morning, David. Nice to be with you. We saw some sequential improvement first quarter over fourth quarter. Fourth quarter was a, a quarter that really slowed at the end of the year. Um, we saw the demand increase through the first quarter, especially a strong March. We've also seen some positive signs in areas that had been a constraint in 2022, such as marine pack cargo for exports. China's opening up. Uh, we started to see China really move into the market. From February into March, you, you would start to see an increase there. Uh, North America is holding up uh, relatively well. We talk about the consumer strength here, but we see it in most sectors. I'd say the biggest weight on all of our businesses in the housing and in the construction area, and then the knock-on effect on durable goods, things like consumer electronics and appliances that that has. Europe is also a, a bit of a weight. I, I'd say the most negative outlook on GDP is in the European region, and, and also Europe has moved into a high-cost position region in our industry, which has not historically been that case. But overall, I do feel like things are starting to move uh, in the positive direction. We, we got a little bit of pricing back in plastics uh, in the month of March. We've got some pricing nominations out in April. We're starting to see our input costs come down. And, of course, we've got a billion dollars worth of self-help that we're going to deliver through this year. Yeah. Uh, specific to the Chinese market, I'm just curious, what are your expectations there as it sort of opens up? You know, what are you seeing on the ground, if you can bring us up to date right now, in terms of at least these last few weeks even? Well, I'd say the consumer uh, is going to drive it. I, I haven't seen much move in China to stimulate the housing market, which we have seen in the past whenever they're trying to get the economy going. They have a very similar profile to what we see here in terms of year-over-year -year housing starts reduction, uh, whether it's multifamily homes, uh, you know, that's most of what they what's built in China, um, single-family homes. You're seeing year-over-year -year 30, 40 percent reductions. So, so I don't see that coming back yet. Uh, but I do see on, on the consumer side of things, obviously, in the luxury items, they've been relatively strong. But day-to-day -day items, uh, they continue to be strong as well. Think, think personal goods for your everyday use, uh, items at the grocery store. Uh, apparel is starting to pick up a little bit, so polyester demand and, and clothing demand starting to pick up a little bit off of some low operating rates. And then EVs have been uh, growing pretty dramatically in, in China. I'd say that's the, the, the biggest ticket item that is really showing great growth and, and we see some of that here as well. Uh, Jim, it's great to see you as always. Jim Kramer here. I struggle here, Jim, because it, the uneven nature of the supply and demand is hard to grasp. Packaging and specialty plastic, improving domestic demand, which sounds good. Then industrial intermediates and infrastructure, demand remains resilient. But then you get to performance materials and coatings and demand for consumer electronics and industrial end markets softening. Can you just give us a a view about overall uh, supply and demand, just the basic way that we would if we were back in Act 10. Well, if you think about performance materials and coatings, well, if you think about consumer electronics, not that that's the, the biggest driver for that segment, but if you think about chips, uh, semiconductor chips, the, the biggest fall off has been on memory chips. And you think about what drives that. It's gaming devices, it is uh, TVs, it's those kind of devices. Uh, those have been become long, and of course, the consumer now is spending more money on travel, and so they're taking their elective dollars, what they're not spending at the grocery store, they're spending it on travel. They might be spending it on an EV, um, and so there's less to go around. And I would say until we start to see interest rates soften a little bit and start to see people get back into the housing market, you're not going to see the durable goods side pick up. So I, I would say durable goods is what's dragging the industrial economy down. Um, but on 
everyday items, you know, those parts of our, our business are continuing to look good. Um, in industrial intermediates, polyurethanes goes into home insulation, it goes into appliances, it goes into um, refrigerated storage and, and refrigerated trucking. Uh, those are all a little bit soft compared to last year, and I think it's going to take a while before that housing market picks up. Well, I, I just went, one of the things, I, Jim, you mentioned that there is some self-help. Could you explain to people what exactly you're doing? Because you've been doing self-help. How much, the cost side here, a little bigger than I thought over the course of the last, uh, say, since you came in. What's, what was left to cut out? Well, we have to, to adjust, obviously, to the lower demand rates, which means we've got to bring operating rates down in some regions. Primarily, that has meant Europe. Uh, Europe operating rates are running about 10 percentage points lower than they are the rest of the world. In our cost advantage regions, in Canada, the United States, in Argentina, in the Middle East, uh, we're running at pretty high operating rates. So some adjustment needs to be made for that. We're taking about 500 uh, million out of structural costs, and then we're looking at obviously operational efficiency improvements in the rest. And some of that will be working capital as well. We've been doing a great job of managing inventories and keeping working capital in check. Um, and I think that we will continue to keep pressure on that until we see some really strong demand signals come through. All right, well, we'll be watching closely for those strong demand signals as well. Jim, we gotta leave it there for today, but uh, it's good to see you. Thank you for taking the time. Always good to see you. Take care.